The right design of intended learning outcomes is the first and crucial step for a good teaching experience design. But the intended learning outcomes are not just the objective we need to go for. They are also a real reference point, helping us in our choices every time we stand at a crossroad in the design of our teaching and learning path. It is necessary that we formulate the intended learning outcomes very well, so they can truly be our reference guide. What does formulating well the intended learning outcomes mean? It means, firstly, to think to our students and to what is realistic they will be able to perform at the end of the course. It is relevant to think in terms of performance because performance has this wonderful quality to be observable. The fact that an intended learning outcome is observable allows us, at the end of the course, to effectively verify if it has been achieved or not. Let's try an example. I could simply say that the student will know the basis of integral calculus. Or I could venture into a more articulated intended learning outcome and say, for example, the student will be able to present, using the correct disciplinary language, the definitions and the theorems of integral calculus. If I just say that students have to know something, I won't be able to observe it. This is the reason we need to formulate intended learning outcomes in terms of observable performance. In that way, we will be able to put the basis for the constructive alignment that, according to Biggs, constitutes an efficient teaching and learning design process. Do you remember? We already discussed about how Biggs underlines the importance that the intended learning outcomes are well aligned with the strategies that we adopt to observe them and with the activities that we put into play in the learning and teaching path. So, if I formulate these intended learning outcomes in terms of performance, it almost automatically means I already know how I'm going to evaluate them coherently. In fact, when I say students will be able to present definitions and theorems using the correct disciplinary language, etc., it's already clear that I will observe students presenting the contents in a specific way. In this way, we will have a higher probability of creating a truly constructive alignment among the internal learning outcomes, the teaching learning activities and the assessment processes, compared to a context where we might leave a more generic objective such as the student will know. Hmm? To help us formulate the intended learning outcomes in terms of performance, we can use the startup formula, the student will be able to. Afterwards, so we can add a verb, that is the action we expect the student to complete, and the object. Then, we can further specify the intended learning outcomes, also giving information on the field of application, and on the context of the performance expected from the student. In this case, we will have the student will be able to performance, recognize, verb, action, starting from the analysis of blueprints and pictures, context of the performance, the Roman era religious buildings, content, built in the Italian territory, field of application.
Let's now try to summarize the main points, so that the internal learning outcomes may be helpful as an effective reference point in our teaching design process. It's very important that the moment when we formulate them matches also with the moment in which we really focus on the transformation of the knowledge, abilities and skills we expect to be part of our students at the end of the course. To formulate the intended learning outcomes well and in terms of our students' performance, we can use an introductive formula such as the student will be able to. This formula can be followed by a verb, the action we expect the student to be able to perform, and by the content which is the object of the action. In this way, we will truly have focused on the outcomes we wish to achieve so that they can be our guide every time we stand at a crossroad in our designing process.